Hi, after talking about physiological labour in our last session, today we're going to look at the more medical side of labour, when you or your baby may need a little more help. Let's start by exploring induction. This is the process of artificially helping your uterus to start contracting. It's pretty common. About two in five women will need to be induced in the UK. This has increased recently due to the Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle introduced by the NHS in a commitment to reduce stillbirth rates by 50% by 2025. There are lots of reasons induction may be recommended, including going past your due dates, a medical condition such as diabetes or gestational diabetes, or if the maternity team has any concerns for you or your baby's health, for example, reduced movements. There are different steps in the induction journey and at each stage your body could react and go into labour. The first step is a membrane sweep. This is offered by your community midwife from about 40 weeks. The next step, if your cervix is not dilated, is to be given prostaglandins. This is a hormone that helps your uterus to contract. You're likely to start with a pessary, which looks like a small flat tampon, and it sits just behind your cervix for up to 24 hours, and it can be removed at any time. After this, you'll either be given a prostin gel or tablet, again insert inserted onto your cervix, but this dose only lasts for about six hours and obviously can't be removed. Different hospitals have different policies on how frequently each of these prostaglandin doses can be given, but at any stage, the goal is to kickstart your cervix thinning and dilating so either your contractions start or your waters can be broken. If your cervix doesn't dilate at this stage, you may be offered another step in the induction journey. A cook balloon or Foley's catheter might be inserted into your cervix to apply pressure and help it dilate. If none of these steps has helped your cervix to start opening, you'll be offered a caesarean section. However, if your cervix is responding to the treatment, the next step in the process is to get you into a room on delivery suite where a midwife can break your waters. One thing to remember is this is not a first in line queuing system for these rooms. The maternity team will triage whose need is most urgent and this can be really frustrating if you feel that other people keep jumping the queue. But understand, you and your baby are being continuously monitored, so try to distract yourself and as relax as much as possible. If two hours after breaking your waters, your contractions haven't started or aren't effective, your midwife will re recommend a syntocin on infusion. This is a synthetic form of oxytocin and helps your body produce strong, effective contractions. This is given by a cannula into your hand and the dose gradually increased until your contractions are coming every two to three minutes. You may be more likely to ask for an epidural as women who are induced can find their contractions are more intense than if they built up naturally. Another key thing to remember is that induction can be a lengthy process. So you and your birth partner will need um, lots of things to keep you entertained. Download an upbeat series onto your tablet or have a great play playlist of songs that make you happy. Remember, you want to boost your oxytocin. The next thing we're going to take a quick look at is assisted delivery. Approximately 12.4% of mums will need a helping hand in the last few contractions to help their baby arrive safely. This could be due to a long or exhausting labour. It could be that your baby is in a funny position and just needs a little help, or that they're showing signs that they need to be delivered a little more quickly. There are two tools that can be used. A Vontuse, where a suction cup is attached to the back of your baby's head or forceps, which are spoon-like instruments which cradle your baby's head. In both cases, as you have a contraction, your obstetrician will pull on the Vontus or the forceps to help guide your baby out. They only do this for about three or four contractions. 
The obstetrician will discuss the options with you and gain your consent before the procedure. However, it's important to understand how they decide on which instrument is safest for your individual case. For example, forceps are often used when the baby is higher up in the birth canal and a von Tuz can't reach. Whilst it's not always possible to avoid an instrumental birth, there are some things that you can do to mitigate the risk. Having good birth support, once again highlighting the importance of a really good birth partner. Using upright and mobile positions, refer back to the birth positions in the download from our last session for this. Or avoid having an epidural, or if you do have one, ask if you can delay active pushing for an hour after you're fully dilated and lie on your left or right hand side as discussed in our last session. So now let's take a look at caesarean sections. About 13% of caesareans are elective. This could be due to your personal choice or due to a medical reason that means a caesarean section is the safest way to deliver your baby. Almost 17% are emergency caesareans, or a better term, unplanned. This could be because your body didn't respond to the induction process, or there might have been a bit of a delay in the pushing stage of labour and your medical team are worried about your baby's heart rate, or that you or your baby are unwell. If you do need a caesarean section, there are three types of pain relief offered, depending on your personal circumstances. Your epidural may be topped up, or you may be given a, a spinal, like an epidural, but it's given in a single dose. Or in very rare circumstances, you may be given a general anaesthetic. You will need to be taken into an operating theatre, so there'll be lots of people, but each and every one of them has a job to do. Unless you're having a general anaesthetic, your birth partner should be able to stay with you and within about five minutes of the operation starting, your baby is born. It's the stitching up that takes longer, usually about 45 minutes to an hour. And as long as your baby is well, you can still ask for delayed cord clamping, immediate skin to skin, and start breastfeeding your baby within that first hour of birth. If for any reason that your baby needs extra help, this is done at a resuscitator in the room by a neonatal doctor. Some babies do need some extra observations, and this will be done on the neonatal unit, which you're allowed to visit 24 hours a day. Facing any of these options can be daunting, which is why we recommend having a flexible birth plan, thinking about your preferences for plan B, C, and possibly D, Research shows being mentally prepared can be a powerful tool in labour. Having multiple plans can help you feel more in control and better prepared should you need any of this extra help, or simply if birth is not what you expected. It doesn't mean that you won't feel upset or disappointed. These are completely valid feelings, but it can reduce the feelings of shock or failure. Birth partners can also feel very vulnerable during labour. They may not be giving birth, but they are watching someone they love do so. So it's really important for them to think about their own mental health and well-being in this scenario, to have their own set of relaxation techniques, and not to be afraid of telling the midwife if they're just finding it a little tough. The better prepared they are, the better support they will be for you. But it's also why the NICE guidelines recommend women are offered a birth debrief with their midwife or a trained health professional, regardless of the type of birth they've had. Ideally, try and speak with the team who looked after you whilst you're still in hospital or the birth centre. They can go through your notes and fill in any gaps or answer any questions you may have. If you need a de birth debrief in the days, weeks or even years after your birth, Find out what services are available at your NHS Trust. They can all be different. So we've covered some tough topics today, but hopefully we've given you some ideas that will help you build a flexible birth plan and prepare for a positive birth experience however your baby decides to arrive in the world. 
and also to recognise that it's completely okay to ask for help and support if your birth experience wasn't what you hoped. The mental health of you and your partner are incredibly important, so don't forget to care take care of yourselves. Our next session is going to be looking at the early days feeding your baby. I look forward to seeing you then.